and on supply chain fraud and risk in international freight. He is a young professional with great passion and industry experience in shipping logistics and transport industry. In terms of academic and professional achievements, he has acquired a Master's of Science in Supply Chain Management, Logistics and Transport, Bachelor of Science degree in Supply Chain Management, um, Advanced Diploma in Logistics and Transport, CILT, uh, UK. The SFLAZ comes from Legislation Procedure Diploma, Freight Forward and Practices Diploma, and Fiatta Diploma. Um, he is a past winner of Nation of Zimbabwe and Region Africa and Middle East in the Young Logistics Professional Competition 2018-2019 hosted by FIATA and TT Club. He was nominated runner-up at the 2019 FIATA World Congress. He is currently employed by Barlow Transport um, and Logistics Zimbabwe under the Pacific International Lines PTE-LTD. Singapore Shipping Lines is country assistant agents coordinator. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Inos Chapara Mare to the podium. He's our last speaker of today. Well, it seems I'm the same height with the. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll move the, uh, from, from this podium so that you'll be able to see me. Yeah. Uh, greetings uh, to you all, um, and all protocols observed, uh, all the seniors here present, and uh, all delegates here present. Uh, thank you so much for the invite, and uh, I, I really appreciate to be part of this um, the, uh, winter school we are Telling you a bit of what I understand on supply chain uh, fraud and risks in the international freight. Um, before even I go further, I also want to appreciate uh, my management uh, to allow me to, to be here uh, at this winter school so that after this winter school I'll be able to add value to, to their organization as well. So in this um, presentation, we are going to look at uh, supply chain fraud and risks that happen in the freight, uh, in the freight industry. If you talk about international freight, we are saying there are, there is movement of what is goods and movement of uh, specifically its only goods. We are not talking about people, but let's stick to talking about and discussing about the international movement of of goods. You have noted that when you are doing procurement, you source the goods. After sourcing the goods, you put the goods at the disposal of a multi-modal operator, which is MTO. These are what you call the freight forwarders. The freight forwarders are the ones that will then move your goods from a certain point until they reach your named destination for SPU agreed in hotels. So in this case, there is a definition um, according to uh, different writers there, metals and uh, ETO writers, where they define what supply chain is. Supply chain uh, is defined as a set of entities, e.g. or individuals directly involved in the supply chain and distribution flows of goods and services, finances, information uh, from a source to what? To a destination. This supply chain is a true definition of a what of a freight of, of the freight industry that we are actually in. However, being in that industry, we are faced with fraud that is being faced. With. So we also have a definition of uh, maritime fraud, um, which was given by the International Maritime Bureau. Uh, the International Maritime Bureau they fall under the International Maritime Organization which is the mother of the, of the sea, sea transport. Because if you talk about sea transport, you talk about international maritime organization. But if you talk about the air transport, you are, you are talking about the international civil aviation organization, right? And also if you talk about road, there is international road union, and there is also the international, the, um, the one for, for, for rail as well. 
So fraud is defined an international trade transaction involves several parties, buyer, seller, shipper owner, charterer, ship masters, or crew. So you actually see that this definition is, is taking or it's actually touching on all crucial parties that are involved in the, in the supply chain. So one of these parties succeeds unjustly or illegally in obtaining money or goods from another party to whom on the face of it, he has undertaken specific trade, transport, and financial obligation. So it's not saying, mark me right, if I'm, if I'm wrong, correct me. It's not saying procurement people, right? It's touching each and every individual or each and every party that is involved in the what? Supply chain. Or now they are contributing to what? what? Fraud. So for those, I'm sure there are people from um, the free forwarding industry. Do we have any from the free forwarding industry or shipping line industry? Okay, okay, that's great, that's great. Um, you understand uh, this model? Why I have I have uh, highlighted this model on this slide is to ensure that there is clarity in terms of what I'll be talking about. For you to understand how your goods move, or even your small parcels, they, how they move, this is the process that is taken by the freight forwarding process until your goods are delivered. So we are saying, at the first point, there is a container. Container is the shipper or the supplier, right? So the, the supplier basing everything in this chain is going to be based on those international commercial terms, the inco terms. So in that term, if you are importing, let's say you are saying you, you have an agreement with your supplier to say you want to import on XOX, which is what XOX, maybe let's say XOX um, Chindao or XOX Shanghai in China or XOX any place or port that you would want to pick your goods or airline that airport that you want to pick your goods, um, then you we have to understand that you have to bear the risk, you have to bear the what the you have to be responsible and also bear the cost in the movement. So you see that these are the stages until the goods are delivered to to the consignee who is the buyer or who is the what the importer. Number one fraud that I'm going to touch on is the import customs fraud. This one is one of the most controversial thing that, uh, or they, what they deem to be an error of what happens when people are importing. So we, you will see that in terms of the Zimbabwean economy, as things has become tougher in terms of finances, People have drafted or crafted different ways in where by they would want to reduce the value for their duty purposes. So how they do that? Some of them they misdeclare, misdeclaration of goods is done wrongly in terms of the HS code, the harmonious uh, system coding, uh, which is used for tariffing purposes to identify if I'm importing a cell phone. Um, which type of code should I use? So what people they tend up to do, instead of taking the correct one, they take the one which is giving them low duties. So in that instance, you will find that the law of Zimbabwe in terms of the Customs Act 2302, um, it is part of the it is part of the offences, especially if you go to the uh, section 168 to 185, if I'm not mistaken, the misdeclaration of incorrect tariff code it results in it being deemed to be fraud in terms of what? In terms of uh, imports. And also another issue that we have identified is that there is misdeclaration of country of origin. How people nowadays they do it. You know, it's quite interesting to be waiting for, for a shipping line and also having 
a bit of experience in the, in the freight forwarding, whereby you, uh, sometimes if a client approaches me with all oh, those tricks, you actually know what they want to do. So what they do, they are doing what they call the switch view of life. Right? You import your goods from China or, um, sorry, I'll use mostly China or the Far East because that's where we usually service. So if you're importing from China, they will do a switch bill of lading in, in South Africa, or they may do it in, in Jebo Ali, uh, which is UAE, so that it reflects to say this is the origin of what? Of the product. While is the actual product was manufactured in what? In China. So this system, it, it, it's, the switch bill of lading, it's actually a good system. Why is it a good system? You know that if you are in business, if I'm importing goods from company X and then I want to supply company A, right? Then that means company A doesn't need to know my source of supply. That's why we use a switch view of, of Latin. But now it has tended to be the other way. The freight forwarding industry or other professionals they have taken advantage of that system to say if they are doing a switch bill in South Africa, then they have to, I mean, to request for the SADAC certificate or the, the SD South Africa Zimbabwe agreement so that they can be exempted or not on the value for duty uh, purposes or the duties or taxes that are supposed to be levied on that consignment. So you will find, you will find point four whereby we're talking of false invoices false representation and forgery. What, what is happening now, that's the same scenario that is resulting to import customs fraud, whereby the forwarding people, or us, the freight forwarders, uh, our, you know, so what is happening? They are importing goods, maybe the actual cost of the goods is um, 50,000, but when they get to Mozambique, when they want to do the port clearance, or South Africa, they want to do the port clearance, uh, for transiting to Zimbabwe, they will change the invoice. But nowadays, uh, our authorities, they are smarter than that. They will request for your proof of payment. That's why you will see that some of the guys, they will end up with a 100% fine plus the actual duty that you're supposed to, to pay. Mm. There, I have highlighted the some of the documentary uh, fraud that happens under international freight. There is also the one that also happens in terms of the international uh, freight, which is the view of flooding. View of flooding. View of flooding is one of the most do uh, mostly documented that people would want to taper around, considering the situation that is happening in Zimbabwe, whereby. Our exchange control says that you have to apply through the auction system for your funds to be remitted. So in that sense, some, specifically in Zimbabwe, we haven't had that situation. But in other countries, we have had that situation, whereby you could actually make, you have uh, bills of life. That's a typical of uh, PIL, the uh, template of uh, bill of life. So what happens? The, the clients, they, they will start, or the front, front stars, they will start how your view of flooding is what? Crafted. So, they will come with that crafted view of flooding in order for you to release the, the goods. So, if you are not very careful um, by checking the features, because the features that we have on our, all the views of flooding, whether MSC, whether MES, or whether PIL, they have features that you cannot actually see with your eyes. You need ultraviolet or the ultraviolet to check for those features. So that's how sometimes we detect the documentary fraud in terms of in terms of views of light. And also you notice that because of how difficult the system of payments are, you will see that people are using the same documentary fraud to apply uh, for monies, especially when, when you have countries with strict exchange controls, like South Africa, it has got strict uh, exchange controls, um, 
cannot mention about our system as we know it. Um, what they do, they will go, let's say you have um, three banks, right? So the same bill of lading will be used to apply for, for funds in different banks. And that, that is actually a system that has not been noted in, the, in this, I mean, maybe they have noted it, but from my own view, they have not noted it. Because you will see that at some point, we end up with volumes of money outside, just waiting for future shipments to be paid so that they avoid some of the inconveniences. So the other international freight uh, port is the return fraud. This one is one of the one of the tricky ones because it happens under the reverse logistics, right? Why I'm saying it happens under reverse logistics? Let's say, for example, let me take an example, um, right? I'll just demonstrate something. So this is a bottle of water. Uh, I need another. I need an empty of love. Or just okay, let me let me just okay. Thank you. So the return forms, how it operates, you will see that uh, when I'm exporting this product uh, to them here, so I want this product to reach them. So, right. And you're going once you get over that product, you are going to face this thing. And yourself. Um, face, um, in no. facing them. Yes, first step. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you face the other side, the same applies. <coughs> yes. Okay. So this is what this is actually what happens. <laughs> so like what I'm saying, right? Like what I'm saying here is that you are still facing there. You are the supplier of the product. You know what you have ordered there, right? Okay. So in that sense, why I'm saying the return, you, you see, okay. So I want you to tell me <laughs> where is your product there. Check and tell me where is your product. No, check. <laughs> okay. So, so, so. <laughs> the, the, reason, the reason why I'm telling you that, the reason why I'm telling you that, that's the, sometimes that's the situation that is faced with the, uh, procurement people. You import a product, right? Because you lack visibility of that product, you, you end up in stresses. So you need to be able to have visibility of where your product is, so that when I'm going to say, like, face that other side, don't worry. Don't worry. So. So if I ask my memo there, where is your product now? You are able to tell, right? That's visibility that you're supposed to have as a procurement person. To say, where is my product and where is it now? Before I touch on what? Return fraud. That's what happens. So what happens now, because you lack visibility in your supply chain, what will happen if you are the supplier, right? You, 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 you provide me with the right product. But the next thing that will happen, I'm going to return to you a damaged product, right? A defaulted product with nothing to do with whatever I would have highlighted to you to say I have a challenge with this. Because because you are not monitoring your supply chain, you will not be able to tell where the damage of the product happened. So if you have visibility, you are able to pick where the damage happened and you are able to say, okay, at this stage it was damaged, so can I have the reverse logistics, but because you lack visibility, it will be on your cost. So that happens on return what? Return fraud. So let's go on the next uh, fraud. I, I know you actually know many frauds that are happening. 
But what I have, have, what I have just done here is to highlight some of the what uh, frauds that are happening in the freight what in the freight industry. Here, that's your neighbour. What's happening to your neighbour? And what are exchange website frauds? If we are talking about exchange website frauds, what are they? What are we seeing really? Because if I ask you, exchange um, website frauds. Ah, uh, that's where you, you will see some, some, some other people tell me, ah, digital, di digitalization, uh, or, I mean, uh, IT, the modern, I, I, IT, the modern internet of things. That's what you'll be telling me. But there are so many flaws that are there. So what, is, what happens on the exchange website flaws is that the fraud, fraudsters or the fake uh, freight forwarders who are not real, who are just in there to make money or to take opportunities to know that you as a fruit forwarder, like they know that PRL um, or Bololi Transport, they move, they move high volume or high volume and also high volume car. What they do, they will create a platform, right? So the, this platform might be created by Bolore, meaning uh, us or PRL, whereby we are going to invite though that, that's what you call your e is it what your supplier e supplier evaluation uh, my apologies if i offended the procurement professionals because i'm not i'm not really to uh, procurement but there is a platform whereby people will submit their at uh, is it tenders they will submit tenders in order for them to be considered uh, for transportation or movement of goods. So this exchange websites, what they do, they create a platform. It's a platform, it's a website. So in that website, they will say we have load one. This load one contains uh, goods of value, maybe 50,000. Load two, goods of value, uh, 80,000. So on, so on, so on. So in that way, the fraudsters, they are able to tell that this one, because of its value, is likely to be a high value, what? High value cup. So what they will do, they will submit and offer you a lucrative uh, deal so that you don't, what? You don't reject. And they will also uh, issue you uh, with common documents, fraudulent or for, forged documents that will seem as if they are real. That's what they will call deception fraud, whereby I will go and ask, uh, say, Itai, what's your vehicle range number for, for the 30 time? You told me that, 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 and the trailer. I will go and forge the same document, and it will seem as if they are the original issued documents, and I will submit. Once I submit those documents, they will come and load that track. But you will never get to get the product being delivered to the right place. Why they would have sold the, the product? So these are certain frauds that are happening in the what? in the industry. So you will see that uh, on this example, it's, it's exchange website frauds. This diagram is adopted from TT Club, uh, that is through Transport Club, which is the specialist in the uh, freight insurance. Are interested, they will actually they are actually showing in terms of in terms of South Africa what are the products that are being the I mean the exchange what frauds that are happening in different regions of South Africa. So you see first in the and then Eastern the um, Cape 30 that is in what 2020 and then if you check in 20 second quarter, that's first quarter, second quarter, it had increased by what? 3%. So you actually see that because of the internet of things, people are losing lots of money. And then we have the mandate fraud. The mandate fraud, that's the one whereby I will manage, the fraudster will manage to hack into our emails. If my email is written inos1 at pilzimbabwe.com, you will come in and change maybe add another e in front of what? 
money, and then it will make uh, sense for him to. So you'll be following up on the email conversations that will be happening until the stage where we are saying SPIL or SGlory. We are now going forward to issue an invoice. That's when he will chip in. He will block my email and chip in and issue an email with their banking details. That's a money. So you will find out that people lose money because of that. If you don't pay attention to what? To the emails to say, okay, this email, why is it addressed like this? You end up having that same what? Same problem. Right. There's, there's my brother there who was talking about insurance. So the same principle that I highlighted, the maritime insurance fraud, the one that I highlighted where there is a return, right, of the product, you will find that under the maritime insurance fraud, you will find that some people, they don't declare what is actually, because of the volume they are moving, they will just declare as if everything was contained in what? In the container, right? Or in the unit loading device, that is if you are using air freight. So what they will do, they will include everything. What is they, they, they will not sorry, they will not include everything. They will just include others. But on their insurance, when they are insuring their goods, they will advise you that we have insured the what? The products. When the products arrive at destination, then they will dif discover that the product that, that they are saying it was in the container, it was not there. But as an insurance company, if you don't have systems that are, I mean, investigative, you will end up paying for, for that insurance uh, cover. The reason why, it's visibility again. Why I'm saying if you don't have visibility, they will tell you when the container arrived at the port, we opened the container, we did an inspection. When we did the inspection, that's when we lost the car. We, we lost the product. Just because you did not have what? Visibility. And also the other type of um, frauds that involve claims for loss and damage of capital based upon service and tickets, which have either been fraudulently made by claiming uh, the, is it the claim, clemente, clemente, um, in terms of to say. So this happens usually to us as shipping lines. Why we are saying that it happens? Uh, we had a situation uh, when we had uh, uh, the natural disaster, which is Cyclone Nidai. So when Cyclone Nidai happened, people, they ended up having cargo uh, being wet in the ports, being damaged. So we would say we want a PIO representative, uh, also the consignee, uh, the consignee, which is the importer representative, and an independent what? Surveyor to come and open and to determine. So what they will, some, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it happened to us, but what others will do, they will say, okay, after determining, to say this is the amount of goods that have been damaged, they will coerce the what? The independent what? Surveyor to say, okay, instead of giving them 5,000 value, give them 2.5, right? So that they can what? Claim, uh, put across there, they are clear. So that, those are certain types of uh, frauds that are happening under maritime insurance. Okay, so after having covered all the, what I think to be most important in terms of maritime insurance, in terms of international trade frauds, and uh, we'll also look at international risks that are happening. My apologies, uh, I'm quite uh, on the maritime side. Uh, so you will not see me mentioning a lot of uh, A, rail, um, other modes, but allow me just to give you a bit of what I understand in terms of uh, this area. So in terms of uh, international freight risk, you are seeing that one of the things that are affecting people, uh, importers or even exporters is the Abandonment of what? Of cargo. The circumstances of abandonment of cargo is, is one, payment issues. With, with the rate at which the auction system was uh, rolled into operation, I have seen that in terms of uh, big companies, even in Zimbabwe, I will, I will not mention them, 
uh, even smaller companies, those that are trying to import goods, they have been faced with that challenge. Why? They are failing to remit funds to wherever they are supposed to pay. So the cargo who arrive at the port, when they arrive at the port, the payment uh, would not have uh, reflected, number one. The port free days elapsed, the container line demanded free days elapsed. After the elapsing of the port storage free days and the container line demanded free days, the client will start incurring additional cost on top of the freight that he's supposed to, to pay. So in that instance now, it's going to end up being a burden on the client to the extent that the value, if your value of cargo was 12,000 in the container, and you end up saying, okay, the overall cost that I'm supposed to pay is more than the cost of what? Of the product. Then that's the circumstance where they end up what? Abandoning cargo. That's a template of net of abandonment. You say, I, Inos, um, uh, representing PIL, uh, saying that we are going to what? To abandon cargo under these circumstances. And we allow the shipping line to either I mean, do the appropriate or their deemed appropriate way of destroying or auctioning the car. That's the template of what? Abandonment of what? Of car. So you will see that in Mozambique, South Africa, Namibia, they have a system whereby they, if they see that this car, like now Zimbabwe, is the known of importing tires, eh? they will resell to another person. That's why the reason, that is the reason why you see some of the suppliers, they are saying that we cannot, where on the view of Ladi, where it is written consignee, they are now saying to order. Why are they saying to order? They are keeping against the risk of what? Of cargo being abandoned. So when they realize that this cargo is likely to be abandoned, they will look for another buyer to take up the, the cargo. That's why you will see sometimes it's written to order. If you see a, a bill of lading written to order, it means that so far it's an open check and everybody can, can buy. That's the other inside the print. This is one of the risks that the freight forwarding industry is facing. Why am I saying the inside the print? You know, the inside the print has destroyed even big companies. It's a risk. It's a high risk. You know, I, I don't know in terms of the insurance, how you would rate it. I, I would say the red zone, uh, from my understanding. The red zone, why I'm saying the red zone, the insider threat is the one that causes some of the frauds that we highlighted. It's an insider person. Let's say I have Inos who have worked for PIL for 10, 5, 10, more than 10 years. I'm, I'm now a trusted uh, employee and they will tell me to be very loyal to the brand. Well, at least I'm destroying the brand from within. That is what happens, especially for around what they call around the corner, around the corner um, deliveries. What happens under around the corner deliveries? Me as the insider person, I'll give an external the warehouse outfits to say you are going to tell this transporter to say we are going to deliver at A instead of what? At B. So we will divert that truck to go to A. Right? And then we will do our, our deals there. But nothing will be recorded to have been received in the actual company. So you will find out that the insider threats, they are causing financial losses, even loss of privacy, and also uh, IP theft and unauthorized disclosure. You see that there is also a disruption of IT services, demand infrastructure, personal injury, or loss of life. This is being caused by this. This inside the threat is it's not just the way, it's actually people. It's actually people who are causing the effort. So you will say that the inside the threats, what they will do, they will say, um, we have this client. Let's say, for example, we have. Um, We have uh, Mimosa who wants to import, and he knows that Mimosa imports high volume of car. So what 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 they will do? This inside the press, they will say, hey, hey my friend, there is this contract. 
where I'm working, they are offering this, right? So go to that client and offer a, a better deal so that we can what? Proceed. That's how insider, insiders are destroying what? The company. Recently, we had a situation um, at our workplace, right? Whereby there was a, a mistake in terms of incorrect release or loading. Because of the same, because of the similarities in terms of the prefix of a container, all right? That container was loaded, but the only difference was the last what? Digit. That container was loaded across the Zimbabwean border, got confiscated by Zimbra. The reason for that, it was not part of the what cargo that was supposed to be imported in Zimbabwe. So in terms of you trying, even if it's a genuine mistake, it's a given, the customs act, it's a, it's a what? You were attempting to defraud the, the nation of, of their taxes and VAT. So what they will do, they will seize the container until you give a comprehensive answer. Even if you give a comprehensive answer, they will, also, they will still charge you, right? So these are some of the uh, challenges that uh, the risk that are happening. So as a freight forwarder or as a pro procurement pe personnel, you have to make sure that you pay attention to the containers that you are saying proceed to release. Don't just release to say, oh, okay, this order is from Xinjiang. Then you are, you are going for to release without checking the document. Check your documents, take your document, check it properly. And then this diagram is there because it will not fit down there. We are going to talk next this slide. We are going to talk on the problems of um, misdeclaration of car. This is another risk that is happening. Why I'm saying it's a risk? People will be trying to play around to say we have this car, but in that car they know that the carriers, the shipping lines, they are not accepting the movement of that uh, of that product. Like lithium batteries, is it's deemed to be uh, a, a dangerous product. We usually request the M MSDS to say, okay, provide that, provide us the MSDS, and then we check if it meets our standard. So some of them they don't declare their car. But anyway, if you don't declare, we will we'll charge you, we we'll charge you an amount of thirty thousand just for misdeclaration. No matter you say, ah, this was a mistake, but the moment you notice that there is a product that is not supposed to be in that container or to be on our vessels, we will charge you 30,000 per container. So that's another thing. So you see that the, the shipping lines, they have lost, they have lost their um, vessels because of people who are misdeclaring the, the product. So in that end, you also need insurance. On every, on every shipment that you are going to move, you need insurance. Why we are saying you need insurance is because we are humans, even though we are working for a shipping line, we cannot detect what is in each and every container. So if the mishap happens, or our vessels caught fire, or there's a natural disaster, then you need insurance to cover you. You need the marine clause A, uh, B, and C, but uh, they are all of different levels, which can assist you in, in, in terms of itself. This total loss of cargo, it, uh, this total loss of cargo, sometimes you will see that uh, there is the checksum, the barber they call the checksum, or checksum, whereby cargo we end up being on the what? In, in the water, right? Because of of mishaps that happen on sea. So that's total loss. And the total loss of cargo, that's another risk that happens in international what? In international freight. So you need to keep that. To, for you to keep that, you need your, your insurance. And damage of cargo, that's the one that I highlighted earlier on. And the round the corner theft, I explained <coughs> that. And also the other issue that will cause uh, will cause challenges in this freight industry is the dwelling time that is taken in the in the movement of what of goods like if we are moving goods from china usually our route is PIL, it's uh, china maybe china to singapore then singapore to uh, 
uh, Maputo, Mozambique, that MZ service. <laughs> so what happens if it gets to our main traditional port, you will see that it might take what? Longer term there. That's another risk that is exposing the theft of cargo at ports. Because at ports, they will be able to determine what is in the container because of the manifests. They also have the manifest that they submit. So it's not only for water and health or even air, but also for marine, there is also manifest that they submit electronically and fiscal. Then also, non delivery of cargo after payment. This one is one of the risks whereby people are saying, for you, to, for us to be able to load your container from from China, you need to pay us 100%, right? Please, that's a no-go area if you haven't done that. It is ideal to adopt the FOB incoterm in order to safeguard yourself from that result. Once the container has been shipped on board, then you then you, you process payment or surrender the same TT or SPO agreement. That's what is happening. Because there's a, a situation that happened. Um, a Chinese paid uh, somebody, in a company in, in Mozambique, uh, requesting for crop, high concentrated crop. So what these guys did, they went where containers were being loaded for high concentrated crop. They took pictures, say, yeah, we are now going to load your product. But what, what the client finally got in China, it was surprising, got five cents after payment. So those are certain things that you really need to, to take due diligence about and also to ensure that you avoid such this. It's either you can contract somebody, if you don't have a representative in that country, contract somebody to go to be on the ground or invented Serbia to go to be on the ground while it's your product is being loaded, especially with first time suppliers. Then another risk that is there is the overweight. Why I'm saying the overweight? The overweight is a challenge because uh, the risk of overweight is that um, us as carriers, right, we will charge you for exceeding our VGM, the verified uh, gross mass. Why we are saying verified gross mass? We have different methods of determining the verified gross mass. The first one, we go on the way bridge uh, with the with the container and the products on the web region, we determine the VGM to say this is not supposed to exceed this. Or the method two, we are saying the weight of your product, right, plus the weight of, uh, plus the tar weight of uh, empty container that you can determine to say this is what your VGM. So when you're loading your goods from China, please make sure you pay attention to your VGM because we we'll charge you 30,000 for overweight. And it's free money for us because you didn't have the knowledge. And they say that uh, in law, I'm not a law person, but they say it's not ignorance of law, there's no, there's no defense. So we are just saying pay attention to, to that weight issues. Even if you go back to the, if you go to the back of, the, of our view of land, you will see that they are the closest that was being mentioned by there of uh, insurance, where you can hold us liable and where you cannot hold us liable, and uh, where we can penalize you for the wrong delivery of, of goods. And also the other risk is payment risk, which I discussed about the auction systems of Zimbabwe. So basically, these are the international freight forms and international prejudice that are happening in, what? in the industry. The other one, they are the natural disasters, which I partly mentioned to you, uh, but these are the things that I deemed would be of essence for the supply chain professionals to be aware of. Thank you so much. you're going to share with us all this presentation so that each and everyone will have a copy of what has been presented. 
uh, it's always good to keep not safe. Thank you.